Oh, ladies and gentlemen, whew, we have a lot to talk about here. I am, I am just in awe at the amount and the array of conversations that have just spilled over about this situation. But most of you guys have heard about the news. You know, Twitter has banned Donald Trump's personal Twitter account. And, you know, any alternative account that he has made over the past 72 hours and alleged he has, those accounts have also been banned as well. But Twitter is not the only social media or internet site that isn't playing around. Also, Facebook has banned Trump. Google, that's a whole other conversation. I'm not even sure. Have they blacklisted his name? I don't know what's going on there. Um, Spotify, I guess, you know, Donald Trump, my boy over here, Donald Trump's just going to drop a diss track on Joe Biden when he leaves office. Um, Snapchat, Instagram, Shopify. Yeah, now Trump can't, you know, sell those MAGA hats on Shopify. Um, Reddit, now to my knowledge, Reddit, uh, his account has been banned. Uh, anything, uh, you know, that encourages violence or any type of violence surrounding any of the uh, uh, groups that are actually, I guess, visited Capitol Hill will also be banned, as well as the threads. Twitch, yeah, my boy Donald Trump, he's just going to hop into Warzone real quick, catch a couple dubs, maybe get a couple million uh, followers, subscribers, and donators on Twitch. YouTube, TikTok, imagine being the president of the United States, guys, and actually jumping onto TikTok and monetizing him, you know, dancing or whatever. <laughs> I'm just trying to picture Trump dancing, like, not trying to diss either side of the, uh, you know, um, political spectrum. I just think that's pretty funny to me. And then also Pinterest, all right? So there's a lot of things to discuss here, and we will jump into a variety of different discussions. And I'm going to try to make sure that I appeal to both arguments, both sides in certain arguments, because at the end of the day, the American people, they need to meet in the middle. That, that's just where my political stance lies. You can't have the extreme end of one thing and not have upset people on the other side. There needs to be common ground. There should be an open discussion. So that's why I'm going to be talking about both sides in terms of arguments later on in this video. But the first thing that I need you guys to understand, right, is that Twitter banned Donald Trump's account. Trump doesn't lose his freedom of speech. He can leave the White House or go and, you know, talk in the White House and say pretty much anything he wants, obviously within reason that doesn't actually cause, you know, a global outrage, right? He can pretty much say anything he wants about the quote unquote rigged election, like you guys can think it's rigged or not rigged. He can say anything he wants, you know, but in terms of his social media channels, they have been banned. Now, Twitter primarily banned Donald Trump because Trump talked about the election and, you know, said multiple things about the election being rigged. But according to officials and just official groups that have actually counted these votes, Biden has actually won fair and square. Take that for what you will. Biden will be our future president, whether you like it or not. And because of Trump's, you know, conspiracies about the election, even after the official count was set in stone, Twitter decided to ban him because of that, because Trump has also, and even in the past, violated the terms of service. There are some golden tweets there, I'm not gonna lie. Trump's Twitter account is a hidden treasure now, um, and at the end of the day, he, but he has said some pretty crazy things. You can't deny that. So Twitter banned him because he violated the terms of service. So this is a private company, you know, basically banning Donald Trump. Donald Trump can still say whatever he wants. When real Donald Trump was created, the account, the official Twitter, he had to sign off on Twitter's terms of service, just like everybody else on Twitter, right? Likewise, he had to sign a terms of service with Facebook if he made a Facebook account, Spotify, etc. I mean, any basic, you know, social media site has a terms of service. And if you violate that, you get banned. A perfect analogy is like, I'm a YouTuber, like I've been doing YouTube for a while, even on my other account. And if I ever uploaded something that violated YouTube's terms of service, I run the risk of getting banned. Anytime Trump has said something edgy on his Twitter account, he also runs the risk of getting banned. That's just how it works, guys. I need you to understand that aspect and that aspect alone. Now, there are arguments to it, right? There are arguments to why, you know, or why Twitter banning him is wrong, right? I'm at the, I'm at the stance where if there are people saying ludicrous things or there are people saying dumb things on any social media site, they shouldn't be banned per se because they can just run to another echo chamber to spew their ideas. But in reality, we should be having a conversation and making sure that fact is fact and 
fiction is fiction. If you basically tell a child something isn't real, but then they go back to their friends and, you know, their friends convince them it is real, it just becomes a group of people that think something is real when in reality there should be fact checking. There should be people to say, no, this isn't right or this isn't real. So the fact that Trump was banned off of Twitter, I consider it unfortunate because there are so many people that could have fact checked him or said certain things. And then people would be able to actually read, you know, the uh, contesting points of view of other people. I'm all for listening and hearing and, you know, basically taking into account the opposing ends of things, right? That's the only way we can actually meet to a common ground and get somewhere. If you don't have that, that's where we are today as America, because there's just too many echo chambers of people just listening to one side of things. So... Enough of me ranting about that, let's talk about Parler. So Parler was also banned off of the Google Play Store as well as the App Store, right? So the reason it was banned was because Parler has actually no moderation in terms of actually banning people. They do have certain things where if, you know, an account gets large enough for some type of like negative uh, reason or, you know, they get a huge following for doing something crazy, yeah, Parler can ban them but it doesn't mean they will. They don't have that distinctly said in their terms of service at the time that I'm making this video. As a matter of fact, even if you search up violence or vi the word violent on Parler's terms of service, you can't find it. I control f it and couldn't find it at all, which I found pretty interesting, right? Because pretty much every social media site has that. If you incite violence, you run the risk of getting banned or you will be banned. So I found that pretty interesting. So Parler only had 24 hours, which is kind of unfortunate because it usually takes longer to develop a moderation system. So this happened right after Trump's Twitter basically got banned. So Parler doesn't really exist right now unless you go on the website or Safari to actually search up Parler, then sign in. It's not of an ease of access thing as opposed to having the application on your phone. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Right now, Parler is mostly right-winged at the end of the day. That's just how it is. That's what their brand is kind of known for right now. And I find that to be unfortunate too because there should be both ends discussing and talking, but it's just basically an echo chamber right now for, I would want to say, at least right-wing people, but also even some of the extreme conservative ideologies, right? Or even, you know, some of the extreme points of view of just like right-winged people at the end of the day. So it is unfortunate that it was banned because I think it could have been a great co a competitor to Twitter if you had more people join it because there could have been opposing views clashing at at least at a decent level and maybe even an educated level, but it never became that. And now it's, you know, basically banned off of both app stores, right? So what is the big, I guess, picture here? Well, the unfortunate reality is that big tech is definitely at the level where they are, I would I want to say more powerful than the government at most times, because at the end of the day, big tech has literally banned Donald Trump on pretty much every site. Now, we all know the reason for why, because of Capitol Hill, because, you know, basically all these social media sites do not want to get a bad rap for being one of the reasons as to why another future of violent, uh, you know, event may occur. So that's one of the main reasons they did it. They didn't want Trump basically, um, you know, voicing his opinion to the degree that more people will incite more vi violence uh, down the line. So Facebook, you know, Twitter, Google, Spotify, Snapchat, Instagram, Shopify, Reddit, Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, and Pinterest, they all banned him basically for that reason. The really, I guess, sticky situation becomes very, very uh, important to know because all of these sites, they actually do work together. And I don't mean from a conspiracy standpoint, okay? I know some people are going to be triggered by that phrase, but let me break this down, right? Amazon, Microsoft, for example, both of these big companies, these big tech companies, not only do they create products and stuff like that, but they also have their cloud service. Now, their cloud service actually lets domains and websites run their sites on their cloud services in order to stream videos, in order to even like search the web, right? If you don't have a cloud-based service, your bandwidth, you're just not going to compete with other social media sites or applications. So a clear example is like 
Netflix and Amazon are actually competitors when it comes to Netflix and Amazon Prime Video. However, Amazon actually hosts Netflix through Amazon's cloud-based technology. So, you know, Netflix can actually stream their videos. Obviously, they pay millions of dollars to Amazon in order to host the cloud-based service, but in that regard, they do work together. Now, Amazon also hosts Parler, and at any moment, you know, Amazon could ban Parler or, you know, basically say, hey, Parler, like we don't want you running on our cloud-based service. Then Parler even gets less options to basically host their cloud service and they might not even be a site any longer in the near future. That's just a possibility. It's not a fact yet, but I do want to lay down this foundational argument that yes, big tech is definitely powerful and you guys also need to understand that. So I want you guys to firmly know that I am understanding that, you know, why Twitter did ban Trump and I'm understanding of why some of these tech companies did ban Trump, but it's not just about them banning the president at the end of the day, right? Trump said some pretty crazy things. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like he said some pretty wild stuff on his account. Like th there's no denying that regardless of what side you're on. But the main issue arises when big tech, they there's basically three to four cloud-based services that are predominantly all over the web. They can decide at any moment to not have a site exist anymore if it's controversial enough, right? And Parler technically is one of those controversial applications at this point in time. So they're banned off the app store. They're maybe possibly going to be banned off of Amazon's cloud-based service. And then Parler only has basically one to two options, one of them being the Microsoft cloud-based service. That's where the issue lies, right? So if I ever decided to create a website or to create an account somewhere, and unfortunately a group of people joins my platform and, you know, I have some power over that, but if I decide to, you know, mitigate a certain amount of people, my website's never going to grow to begin with. But even then, like any of those cloud-based services can basically say, nope, you know, cryptics, you can't, you can't do this. We're just going to ban your website. You're, you're not going to exist as a website any longer. That's where my main concern lies in terms of internet censorship. Yeah. If I violate one of these other companies terms of service, yeah, ban me. Like then I violated the terms of service. That's just how it works. I signed off on it and I violated it. I'm going to get punished for it. I'm going to get banned for it. But the main issue occurs when I, you know, decide to either create a website or I decide to maybe hop onto another application, but then that application gets banned because big tech decides and deems it as controversial or they just don't want it on their, you know, cloud-based domain because it's going to give them a bad look and in turn could, you know, drive their stock dollars down, right? That's where the main issue occurs. So I think it's really just one of these things that there's arguments for both sides, right? Like, yeah, Trump's Twitter was banned. He, you know, channels 88 million people through there. And yeah, like to a certain extent, his speech, his at least voice over those people has been hindered, but he did sign a terms of service. You guys need to understand that. But there's a whole other spectrum of big tech, there's a whole other set of arguments about big tech really truly defying, you know, people's opportunity to have speech on the web. Most people search the internet more than you could ever think. They're not even, I, I wanted to gauge that you're probably on your phone or on the internet more than you are talking to a person face to face. That's just the reality of it. So yeah, your face to face speech has not been, you know, violated and hopefully never will be, at least in America. But the issue does arise when big tech deems you, you know, this awful person or this controversial figure, and then they decide to ban you off of like basically every media site imaginable. And that that's where the main issue does occur. I think at the end of the day, if you were to level off, like, um, you know, like if you were to set certain levels or certain power levels for, you know, the government and maybe even like city states and stuff like that, it would definitely go like, city states and then you know the, the federal government i guess and then you got you truly have big tech over the federal government that that's basically where i'm at right now and it is definitely concerning do i think it's going to happen overnight no but this is a gradual progression of big tech really truly getting all of the power that they need on the world wide web
So I hope you all did enjoy this video. I hope I at least hit home some points to you guys. At the end of the day, man, America needs to have an open conversation. You can't have this extreme left end. You can't have this extreme right end. Yeah, maybe some people will have certain values that lean right or left, but it's important for you guys to have open conversations with people without being violent or physical. It really is truly important, guys. And I hope, hopefully, like, at least the, the very few people that watch this video to the very end understand that stance and will actually take that value with them when they're actually discussing with other people. Because that's the only way America's ever going to have a solution for this huge problem that we have and this division that we do have. I'm Cryptix, not being banned off Twitter at this point in time, and signing off.